The scripture that I mentioned even during the worship, the deep calls unto deep. You know, I, I've said it this way various times. I've said that the Bible, the Word of God, is, is, has a fixed length. It says don't add to it, don't subtract to it. It's done. There's, there's no more written revelation. That is the Word of God. So it's got, it's got a fixed length. But it's not just one-dimensional. It's got depth. And the depth is not limited. Is not limited. And in the natural, like in the, in the plain sense, in the plain sense of the scripture, of the psalm, when David wrote, deep calls unto deep, he's, the depth, it's from the depth of his, of his own crying, his own, his, his, his own grief, his own anguish, that's the depth that he's, he's, he's crying out to God from. And the deep that he's crying to is the depths and riches of the Lord. Deep unto deep. But we have permission to go deep. We have permission to go deep. Even in the scriptures that speak about the deep calling. And I say there's also a revelation in this that it's the Lord. The depths of, it's not the deep of the human calling to the depths of the Lord. The depths of the human calling the depths of the Lord. I tell you right now that it's the depths of the Lord calling out to you. Calling to the deep, calling to that, 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 that seed within you, calling to that, that Mashiach within you, calling to the, to the one who called you from the beginning, to the fullness of what he saw deep calls unto deep. In other words, there is something with you that he saw even before he called you. Even before he calls you, there's a thing that he was bringing forth. And that thing is the seed that is the Son of God that he was calling forth to come out from you. Deep calls unto deep. It's the deep, the depth of God that's calling into the depths of you to say, bring forth. Bring forth the fruit of the kingdom. Bring forth the fruit of the kingdom. Deep calls unto deep. You know, we can even look at some of these of these parables that Yeshua said, and we can look at it at the plain sense, and but we can go deep. Deep calls unto deep. He says in one place, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. Upon finding a pearl of great value, he went out and sold all that he had and bought it. So, so who's the merchant? And what's the pearl? And what's selling? See, in the natural, what Yeshua was saying, in the, just in the natural sense, in the plain sense, in the immediate sense, what he's saying is that the merchants are like us, and the pearl of great price, the pearl of great value is the kingdom itself, and we find it, and we're willing to give everything up for it. But there's depth. There's depth. There's depth. And I tell you that deep calls unto deep, and the merchant is not just us finding the kingdom. Because it says in one place also in the, in the Proverbs about a, a jewel, a treasure of great value. And it says that a woman or a wife, a righteous wife, is like a treasure. A treasure. A treasure. So I tell you right now that the merchant is not just us looking for the pearl, which is the kingdom, and saying, I'm going to give away everything. I'm going to give away all of it for it, which is what we do. I tell you right now that it's not just, it's not just, it's not just that. It's Yeshua looking for a bride. It's Yeshua looking for that jewel of great value. As it says in the Psalms, he's looking for that virtuous woman. He's looking for the bride. The merchant is Yeshua. And selling all he had is giving his life. Is giving his life. The merchant here, he ain't just rummaging through a bunch of oysters. Looking for some pearls. This is the husband looking for a bride. Deep, deep, deep calls Unto deep. It's the same thing with the scripture that was just prior to it. It says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field. So in the plain sense, the, the treasure that's hidden in the field is the kingdom. 
and a man that's us found it and hid it. And because of the joy of what we found, we again sell everything. We give up everything. We give up everything. We give up everything. We give up everything. We may have liked, you know, certain activities before we found the kingdom, but we give it up. We give it up. We sell all to buy that field. We sell all to buy that field. And that's, that's the natural sense, the plain sense in Hebrew. It's called the Peshat. But there's deeper than that, deeper than that. The kingdom is heaven is like, is like a treasure hidden in the field. I tell you right now that the, the field is not just the, not just the world and the treasure is not just the kingdom that's hidden. The, the field is you. And the man found the treasure. The treasure within you is the fullness of what the Lord saw. The fullness of what he wants to bring forth. We don't have anything. What, what do you see in me? What's the treasure in me? All I see is field. All I see are weeds. All I see are rocks. My field is, very, is, very, is not kept well. But the Lord sees something. And what he sees is himself. In you. He's the treasure. In you, and he sees it, and the man that found it is the Lord himself, and he hides it within you. And because of his joy, 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 for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, right? For the joy, because of the joy, for the joy, he goes out and sells all that he has. He gave his life and buys that field that says you were purchased at a great cost, at a great cost, we got to go deep to find the real meanings of these things or, or deeper meanings to these things. You are the field. The treasure is what he wants to bring forth from you. He's seen it there. Dag Nabbit, he put it there. Dag Nabbit, he put it there. You know, it says that every human being is created in the image of God. Every human being. Every human being is created in the image of God. But you know what? It says Yeshua is the visible image of the invisible God. So you want to activate the image of God? It's not just that he's got cute eyes like my beloved. It's not the image of God that she was created in. When we accept the one who is the visible image of the visible God, then that scripture that says we are created in his image, it activates do you get that? It activates. See, there's the regular meaning. There's the plain meaning that we're all created. Every human is in the image of God. But I tell you, something, there's something deeper. Yeshua is the visible image of the invisible God. That's what it says. So when we accept him, we have him. That's how the image of God gets activated in us. And when the image of God gets activated in us, you know what goes away? Flesh, sin, behaviors, the things that we sold, that we got rid of. Come on. How many people got rid of a lot of stuff? Yeah, come on. The ones that raised their hands, they're the ones that really got rid of a lot of stuff. You know, the ones that just nod are like, yeah, I guess I got rid of some stuff. The ones that nodded and raised their hands are like, yeah, you have no idea how much I got rid of when the Lord found me. And I got my hand way up high, way up high, way up high. He finds the field, and the field itself is loaded with rocks. The field itself is loaded with, 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 with weeds. The field itself is not, is not a field that is worthy yet to bring forth anything but weeds. But there's a treasure. Come on. There's a treasure. There's a treasure. There's a treasure. And he says, I'm going to buy that field. I'm going to buy that field. I'm going to buy that field. Everybody else wants to discard the field. We even want to discard the field. We're ready to give it away for nothing. He says, I'm going to buy that field. I'm going to buy that field. Full price. You know, Susie, when she sings, um, you can have my heart if you don't mind broken things. When we go out and minister in music, she will often tell the story of how when she goes shopping, she likes the, the bargain basements. <laughs> she likes that little room in the back, you know, where they have the stuff that's on sale. You know, where everything is tattered and worn you know, and then you take it, and because they just want to get rid of that stuff, they just want to get rid of it. They just want to get rid of it. You can even haggle it some more. You can bring it to the front, and they're like, okay, it's five bucks. They're like, I'll give you three. 
And they're like, okay, sure, three. We just got to get rid of that thing. We got a whole new set coming into this store. You can take that. That's perfectly fine. But we're like, you sh- this is what Susie always says when she, when, we, when she ministers in this song, that we're like those tattered garments. We're like those tattered garments that are just ready to be given away for nothing. And then Yeshua goes into that back room. And he passes by all the happy, shiny, religious clothes. <laughs> and he goes and he takes one of those tattered ones, us, it's in the back room, and he brings it to the front. And then the cashier goes, all right, what do you, what do you offer for this? Three dollars, two dollars, buck fifty, dollar eighty-nine. And Yeshua says, no, for this I pay full price. For this I pay full price. Okay, you're going to pay me the five bucks? No, no. That's a markdown price. I pay full price for this. And that's how he buys us. That's how he buys the field. But the field can't bear nothing when it's bought. Can't bear anything. It's not, it's not worthy. It's not ready to bring forth any good fruit. This is why it says God's demonstrated his love towards us while we were sinners. Messiah died for us. While we were sinners. While we were sinners. While the field was dry and parched and barren and full of rocks and weeds, that's when he died for us. That's when he gave everything. That's when he gave everything. Because he knows there's a treasure in that field. So how does he start the process? How does he start the process of taking this rocky, empty, lifeless soil And starts to excavate. How does he do it? How does he actually bring forth fruit from this soil which has nothing to offer the kingdom? There's one thing and one thing only he does after we accept him. After he buys the field, he begins to water the field. He begins to water the field. Because there's a scripture in one place that says out of his, this is us, innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So not only does he see the treasure in the field, you know what you are? You're a well. You're a well. You're a well. You're a well. It may look like flat land. It may look like there's nothing underneath But God puts his spirit into you to start to agitate the water. He puts his spirit into you because he sees coming out of you rivers of living water. Not just flowing in you, coming out of you. Not just in you, coming out of you. But it can't just be what you brought into the kingdom because that stuff has to die. He puts into you. So what he puts into you will flow out of you, out of your innermost beings will come rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. And all of a sudden, when he pours through, it's, it's not coincidence. Deep calls unto deep. Deep calls unto deep. It's not for nothing that the Holy Spirit is likened to water. It's not for nothing that it, it talks about the Holy Spirit in the terms of baptism. It's not just an impartation of the Holy Spirit. It's not just a gift of the Holy Spirit. It is the immersion of the Holy Spirit. It is used in the, in the, in the, in the, in the concept, in the of, of context of water. Of water. So the, he gives you the Holy Spirit. He gives his life. We accept him. He comes in. He gives us the Holy Spirit, which is the water. And now this hard ground becomes a little moist. And the moistening of our ground is likened to Repentance. The moistening of our ground is likened to repentance. I want you to get that. The Holy Spirit will remind you of the words of Yeshua. Remind you of what he taught. The reason that you are reminded of what he taught is for repentance. Because all that dirt, a lot of that dirt ain't making it into the kingdom. And you got very used to it because it's a part of you. 
But then all of a sudden, he brings that water in and he starts to agitate that dirt and cultivate that dirt and till that soil. And once it becomes soft, he doesn't give you a heart of stone. He gives you a heart of flesh. And when we have that heart of flesh, when we become soft, we realize that this is no good. It's got to go. And he gives you a little shovel or you take a shovel out. And that dirt that you couldn't even penetrate now is penetrate a bull because he softened it with the Holy Spirit and now it is soft and it is pliable and you are able to say, that's not of the kingdom. That's got to go. And you shovel it out. And you shovel it out. And you shovel it out. That is a phone saying amen. Somewhere I heard that. That's what I heard. And you shovel it out. It says, therefore, produce fruits worthy of repentance. Produce fruit worthy of repentance. You know, Galatians speaks about the fruit of the Spirit, and there are nine of them. I tell you right now, deep calls unto deep. If you just list, leave it at the nine fruits of the Spirit, you're missing what the Lord could be doing. Because he says right here, there's another fruit, and that fruit is repentance. So when he bought the field, we had some rocks called pornography. When he bought the field, we had rocks called hatred. When he bought the field, we had rocks called sexual immorality. When he bought the field, we had rocks called sin. And it was hard. And we didn't know what to do with it. It was just part of us. Then he gives us the Holy Spirit. And our, and our hard heart becomes softened. And we say, that's got to go. That's got to go. That's got to go. You know, I've shared this before. And forgive me for sharing it again. But when I first met Susie, you know, I was going to strip joints. And I accepted the Lord. And I kept going. So one day, one day, because that Holy Spirit, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit comes into you. He's not waiting for you to get rid of all the sin. He's waiting for you to accept him. And the Holy Spirit comes in, and he starts to work on that soil. And all of a sudden, that one day, I remember it. I don't remember who it was on the stage, or what she was wearing or not wearing. But I remember the day that I went in, and all of a sudden... That became disgusting to me. In a moment. In a moment. It wasn't disgusting the week before when I went. It was disgusting then. And I felt like I wanted to puke. And, all, and I had to get out of there. And that was, when did we get married? My gosh, tw- over, that must have been almost 30 years ago now. My goodness. And yeah, almost 30 years ago. And I went out of there and I never went back again. That's because the Holy Spirit now is within you. And agitates all that crap that you brought in. And now, with his help, you can see it clearly and you shovel it out. Therefore, produce fruits worthy of repentance. Thank you, Father. We are in a time, we are in a time when God is raising up a spirit, the fruit of repentance in this land. The fruit of repentance. The fruit of repentance. The spiritual fruit of repentance. In this land. Don't even begin to say among yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. Why is Yeshua saying that? See, you got to go deep. (laughs) You got to go deep. You got to go deep. We don't even begin to say amongst yourselves. We have Abraham as our father. Listen, in this Torah portion, Isaac found the well of Abraham. The the, the wells that Abraham dug. How did he find those wells? What, What state were they in? They were filled up. Who filled them? The enemy. The enemy did this. Now obviously that's the plain sense, right? That's the Peshat. That's the plain sense. You gotta go deep. You gotta go deep. You don't inherit salvation from your parents you got to go through this process yourself. Do you see what I'm saying? Isaac just couldn't say, oh, but my, my father dug a well. 
It's mine now. You got to dig it for yourself. You dig? You dig? You dig? You got to dig it for yourself. Not salvation. That you don't dig for yourself. Salvation is just the wedding of the one who loves you just as you are. Just as you are, just as he found you, with all the rocks, with all that dirt in the well. That's salvation. You don't, dig, you don't dig yourself into salvation. That's salvation by works. He finds you just as you are. But the process of digging that thing out, you got to do it yourself. It doesn't matter if you were born into a Christian family or a Jewish family. you got to do it yourself. It doesn't matter if dad was a believer or mom was a believer or grandma was a believer. Ultimately, it's a personal choice and a personal relationship. Do you understand? This is why Isaac found the well of Abraham all filled up. He had to dig it for himself. Come on now. We have Abraham as our father. Don't even begin to say we have Abraham as our father. In other words, don't rely on your lineage. Don't rely on your upbringing. They can't bring you in. You got to do this for yourself. You got to dig it for yourself. Don't say my father conquered all these things, but now I'm going to do it. Don't, don't, don't go in on behalf of your parents. You got your own. Your parents can't bring you in. They can't do the digging for you. Your pastor can't do the digging for you. Your rabbi can't do the digging for you. At best, I could point out a couple of rocks, and I could point out a couple of weeds, and I can give you that shovel. Well, you got to do it yourself. That's between you and the Lord. Come on, parents. You know you can't do it for your kids either. Your kids got to find their own path in the Lord. You can't dig it for them. You dig <laughs> they got to do it themselves. They got to do it themselves. They got to do it themselves. And then we see Isaac finding other wells. He finds other wells, but the Philistines, they represent the enemy. The Philistines were contending, they were arguing over the well. So he named the well Essek, which means argument. And then he found another well, and it was, there was contention over it. So he named it, I don't even remember what the name was, but it means contention. And then the third one was Rehoboth. Because that one, there was no contention. It's like the Lord made room for me here. What is the Lord saying? When you begin to dig your wells, you're going to encounter challenge. You're going to encounter those spirits of the Philistines. I say, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. You're going to encounter that friend that used to go to the strip joint with. It says, what are you doing? What, are you religious now? You're going to find that contention. You're going to find the contention. I charge you in the name of Yeshua, when you find that contention, when you find that challenge, don't put back into the well the dirt that you took out. The enemy was going to want to fill up your well with the dirt that you pulled out, with the dirt that you have scooped out. Don't do it, sons and daughters. Don't do it. Sons and daughters, challenges are going to come. Just like Isaac had all this challenge with these wells. He found these wells and he, it, was, it was full of contention. It was full of challenge. It was full of difficulty. Don't let the difficulty take the dirt that you've already pulled out of that well in the name of Yeshua. Don't put it back in. Don't put it back in. Don't put back in the dirt of immorality. Don't put back in the dirt of chronic depression. Don't put back in the dirt of chronic anxiety. Don't put back in the dirt that the Lord, with his grace and with his help, you've scooped out. You got that? Thank you, Father. You are a well. 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 Oh my gosh. Let me tell you something. In spite of all that dirt that you got when he bought you with a price of his life, in spite of all that dirt, that Holy Spirit that he put in you to soften the dirt so you can, which is repentance, a humble heart, to take that out, that water stays in. It's not your own water that you have. It's the water of the Holy Spirit. You scoop out that dirt, the Holy Spirit stays in. The water stays in. 
And ultimately, that water becomes reachable. That water becomes reachable. It says you will draw it with joy. Come on, you got to go deeper. With joy. The joy set before him, he endured the cross, the execution stake. With, for the joy, he bought that field. He rehid the treasure and he bought the field for the joy. With joy, you will draw water from the wells, from the well of salvation. And you now have, if you submit to this process, oh my gosh, do you know the challenges that you have? I charge you, I tell you, when you experience those challenges, don't go putting that dirt back in. Because you know what those challenges are going to do? You know what those challenges are for the water? It's like, it's like a filtration system. Do you understand that? The challenges you go through is like the filtration system that will clarify the water. You have to go through the process. Don't fill it with the dirt. Don't fill it with the immorality. Don't fill it with the alcohol or whatever it is that you, that you tried to numb yourself with before. If you let the process, if you let the challenge, if you let the, the difficulty have its course, it will wind up being like a filtration system so the water that you give out will be clear. Do you understand that? It will be like a filtration system for the water that you give to others will be clear. That's why when it says with joy, you will draw waters from the wells of salvation. You know who they're drawing from, the people are drawing from? From you. You know who that well of salvation is? You know where it is? It's within you. That's the well of salvation. That's the well of salvation. Shaftamayim besasson, mi maneha Yeshua. Shaftamayim besasson, mi maneha Yeshua. Mayim, 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 mayim. Hey, mayim besasson. Mayim, 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 mayim. Hey, mayim besasson. That's with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation from Isaiah 12. There it is. And it's become sort of a folk song. Is probably not the right word for it. Israeli song, you know. But the well of salvation, the well of salvation, the well of salvation is within you, sons and daughters of God. The well of salvation is within you, sons and daughters of God. When you, when you start this process, you accept the Lord because he saw it in there from the beginning. He gives you the Holy Spirit to soften this, this hard dirt, these hard places. You extract it out as he, as he enables you to see sin through his eyes. And, and, and things that are not of the kingdom from his eyes, you extract it out of your life. But challenges come, challenges come. And if you don't, if you don't use that to just go back into bad behavior and fill, refill your well, if you let it run its course, if you let the suffering produce the fruit that it, that it was brought forth to do, it will wind up even being a filtration system. So the water that's within you can, can, can feed, that's the wrong word, others. Water others. That are hydrate others, thank you, that are thirsty. Whoever is thirsty, let him come and drink from the waters of life. Do you know where that water is? It's within you. 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 You know, Yeshua said, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to the Messiah, man, I tell you, he will never lose his reward. That cup of water. So you got to go deep. You got to go deep. In the plain sense, he's obviously talking about giving water to somebody who's thirsty. Go to that fountain, fill some water, give it to the person that's thirsty. That's the plain sense of this verse. But there's a water that's deeper. There's a water that's deeper. And that water is within you. That's the well of salvation. The deeper meaning of this is you give somebody the water to drink from what you've gone through, which wound up being a filtration system to enable that water to be clear, that Holy Spirit to be pure, pure, and purified through the challenges that you've gone through, purified through those challenges. Whoever gives a cup of water to drink in my name. You know what that water is? That's the water from your experience. That's the water. That's the well of salvation that you've had. Thank you, Father. Any of this making sense? Thank you, Father. 
Bless the Lord. 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 He buys you with a price. He buys you with a price. A great price. He sold everything to buy the field. With the rocks, with the weeds, with the parchness, with the dryness, with it being infertile, he buys it for the treasure within. Now comes the time to extract that treasure. He gives you the Holy Spirit, which waters that soil, loosens that ground, breaks up fallow ground, gives you a contrite heart to see the dirt that's not of him and the ability to remove it. Challenges will come into your life, but those challenges, if you let it run its course and not go back into sinful behavior, it will serve to purify the water that's within you. And the water within you will hydrate those that are thirsty. Do you understand? Thank you, Father. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. All right, I think I'm done. You can stand up. And it shall be said, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day, the Lord shall be one and his name one. Oh, you know what? I got one other thing to say. I believe that this land that we're in, the land of America, has many wells of Abraham within it. And they've been filled up. And we are in a time right now, I believe, that those wells are getting redug. It reminds me of the scripture uh, where Josiah brought about uh, an initiative to cleanse the temple and to rebuild the temple because it was in shambles from all the idolatry of the past. And the people went in, and the high priest went in, and the helpers went in, and the scribes went in, and they went into the temple, and they were just fixing things up, and they were removing all the bad dirt, and they were fixing things and correcting things, and all of a sudden it says that they found the book, the covenant. They found the scroll. It was hidden. It was hidden in the rubble. It was hidden. They even forgot it. He had to read it to the king. Listen, i got to read what this thing says. Like the word of God. It was the word of God, but it was so, it was so, it was so forgotten because it was so many years that it was even kept. It was there under the rubble. I tell you right now, in this, in this land that we're in right now, we're in the process of cleansing things, and you're going to see that in the midst of the rubble is the word of God. Baruch Hashem.